I'm not just saying I know, repeating words, but I know. As Paul said, I know him in the power of his resurrection. I know he lives. Amen. I woke up this morning and he was there. When I went to sleep, he was there. Amen. He lives. Hallelujah. He's come back to his tabernacle. And he lives. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Did you see it? Amen. I really appreciate uh as a minister, you really appreciate uh, myself. I really appreciate Brother Mike. Because when you're a minister and you're back there, you're just looking for the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost just to move and confirm the Word of God. And He always sends forth the Word. Amen? He always sends forth His Spirit before the Word will come forth and prepare the hearts of the people. Preparing you to receive something from Him. Not me, but something from Him. Amen? Amen. I just want to say that because it's, uh, it just lifts our faith in when God moves. Hallelujah. Amen. I love when God moves. Amen. 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 Yes. If you haven't seen Him moving a lot lately in your life, get on your knees, get praying, yes. do something. Hallelujah. God has to shake yourself yes, up. Amen. Amen. There's, Amen. there's nothing greater than seeing the Holy Ghost move in our lives. Amen. 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 There's so much to say here today. I said to my wife, I said, when am I ministering next? She goes, oh, the 13th, the next uh, Sunday. And then I said, oh, what is that? I, you know, I, oh, it's Mother's Day. I said, oh, Mother's Day. I said, fell on Mother's Day. Amen. And then she looked at me and, and you know, she pointed her finger, hey, and she goes, no fire and brimstone hand and eggs for Mother's Day. <laughs> you know the movie Pollyanna? Every time they came out of service. And I said, you know what? I said, it's not up to me. I said, let me tell you. If Brother Brandon talked about a, a minister, he preached eight times on repentance. And they came to him and said, do you have anything else? But we, you know, repentance is, oh yeah, just let the people repent first. <laughs> if we're all repentant this morning, amen, then the Lord will have something for you, amen. And hopefully it's not that. Amen. It's Mother's Day. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't have a Mother's Day message, but, you know, I was reading in, um, I didn't realize Brother Brandon preached a message on Mother's Day. And so I went through uh, a few things here, and I just want to read a few things before I get into the message today. Amen. Because I think we should honor mothers. Amen. I think, Amen. You know, God created mothers special. They have a position, and when they're in that position, like Brother Mike was just saying, I was just with amen to everything that he was saying there. I don't really have to say much after that about mothers because it's the truth, everything that he said. Amen. You're special. You're wonderful, Amen. When you're when you're uh, you know surrendered in the hands of God, especially. There's mothers out there that are good mothers, but in the hands of God. Amen. There's nobody that can pray like a mother Amen. for their children. I always tell my wife, you, may, I pray when I get inspired, but no no man no man can pray like a mother's heart can pray for their children. Amen. And that's that's where the mother wants to be in the hands of God. Because that's where he uses her in, in great ways. Amen. Brother Rev just said, find your position. Simple. Everybody find your position in Christ. Amen. Stay there. Amen. And let the Holy Ghost use you there. Amen. In simplicity. Amen. And he will. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 1 5. I knew thee before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and anointed you as my prophet to the nations. God grant this morning that mothers, women who are wonderfully wandered away from God, that they will come to themselves this morning and will recognize that what the word mother means, one who has begotten, may she realize that the offsprings of her union with her husband 
has been sacred, little ger ge gems that God has placed under her care. Then God will hold her responsible for the rearing and raising of those children. And as the scripture says, a good woman and the mother, what she is, that her children will call her blessed. Lord, would you not by no means forget to thank, we won't forget to thank you for real mothers. For we know that we have such living today. Real, genuine mothers. God bless them. They are great treasures to us, and we pray that you will continue to be with them. Lord, and may they live happy and see the fruit of their womb serving God. Amen. Amen. That's what we want to see all our children. For, for me and my house will serve the Lord. I know sometimes it doesn't look that way, but we look to what God word and his promise has given us. Amen. Hallelujah. And we pray, God, that those who wear the white robes this morning, or the white flower, to say that their mother has passed beyond this scene of action today, may the Lord God give them the rest and peace of their labors that will follow them. Grant it, Lord. Now take thy word and speak to the people and give them comfort Gather here to feel your presence, to hear your word and be blessed and leave here a better man, a better woman, boys and girls than we were when we entered in. We ask this in Jesus name. I think the thoughts of mothers and I have one thing this morning by the grace of God, still here on earth with us. I am grateful for mother. And being that we were to have also a healing service and not knowing that I would be back tonight, but I thought maybe that it could paint a little different picture here. Mother's is so great. You know the first one you, that receives you in life is your mother. No one can touch you like your mother can because you were conceived from her and she bears you under her heart. And she is the first thing to know you and the first thing in this life to hold you. When you're born, she is the one, the first hands to touch you and wipe back the tears from your eyes. She is the first one to pat you and to love you and to coo over you in this life is your mother. Now I think that there's enough, there's not enough honor that we could give to a mother. Mother is first with the child and she is great. The great responsibility of what that child will be will be based upon the way the mother starts that child on the path and it must travel. Mothers have a responsibility from God to place that child right on the road. And I think that's why mothers have a special touch. I know the boy in the city, and he goes on here, just gonna bypass that. He goes on to talk about uh, a man who drinks a lot, he's an older man, and, and every time he gets drunk, he still comes home and lies in bed with the mother and wants his mother to come home. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop there. There's so much I can read on this, but we understand what he's saying here about mothers. Amen. God bless every mother. I have four wonderful ones. Right? Not four mothers, but I have my mother, who's still alive by God's grace. I have the mother of my children, my wife. I have my daughter-in-law, who's the mother of my first grandson. And my other daughter-in-law, who's the mother of my second grandson. So may God bless them this morning. May God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Be strong in the Lord. Amen. Be strong. Never give up. Amen. Even if you have a wayward son or daughter, be 
be strong in faith. Amen. Amen. And your faith is greater than you think. Amen. When you pray and you believe. Hallelujah. We're not relying on our own abilities. Amen. 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 We're relying on him. Amen. Amen. He's the one who called us. Amen. He's the one who started the work. Amen. He knew me when I was in my mother's womb. He knew he was going to call me to this. I didn't ask to come to this. I wasn't seeking for this, this truth that we have. He called me. He brought me to this. That is my faith. And that is my belief. He knows the mistakes that I'll make. The mistakes that you will make. He knows the weaknesses in your flesh. But beyond all that, he placed an attribute inside of you, himself. And he said, that attribute, amen, will not return to me void, but it will accomplish what it's set forth to do. That attribute will overcome. No matter what our carnal mind thinks about ourselves and our flesh and our weaknesses that get us down sometimes, that attribute will overcome. Amen. That's right. It will bring everything. I believe it with all my heart. It will bring everything subject to the word of God. In my flesh, it will bring subject. That's my faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us stand as we read the word this morning. John 18, 37. which way to Lord. I don't know which way he's going to move this morning or what he's going to say, what he's going to do. This has been a battle for me. Couldn't sleep. Feeling just what a minister goes through sometimes. Just to bring the word of God. But may you receive it this morning. May you pull on the word of God. Amen. I want to speak on what is truth. I mean, I, I can't really speak on what is true, right? Because no man has the ability to do that but the Spirit of God. Amen. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end I was born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Wow. As soon as Pilate said, what is truth? What was he asking? What is the revelation of who you are? Remember, that is the keys that were given to Peter. Not upon a rock or a church or even upon Jesus, but the revelation of who Jesus was. But after he, he just went out, he went out away from him. So many times we see in the Bible, people are, are come right up to the Messiah and just walk away. And then he had to testify that I find in him no fault at all. <clears throat> what is the truth? Father, thank you for your love, grace, and mercy this morning. I just commit myself into your hands, the people into your hands, Lord. What is the truth, Lord? You said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. Father, this is not placed in man's hands. It never has been from the beginning of time. This has been your plan, and you have been fulfilling it all down through the ages, and will complete it, Father. Lord, I pray that you would take every spirit subject to the Holy Ghost in this place this morning. Subject to the Word of God. To you, Father. May you bless each and every one. I remember 
as we spoke our mothers, Lord. May you bless and give what they have need of, Lord, so that their children may rise up and call them blessed, Father. Take control of us now as we place ourselves behind the cross. Forgive us of our sins. Wash us and cleanse us fully through by your precious blood and fill us to overflowing. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I was wondering what I was going to speak on. Last week I spoke on Jesus is the truth of life and the way at the nursing home. And I just was preparing something else on a, a, a series that I had. And um, just got turned right around. And a thought came back in my mind, Jesus is the truth and the way and the life. And uh, so I was just, you know, a minister looks for the word, looks for God's leading. We just want to fall into a channel that he can speak. And Brother Philip was preaching Wednesday night a wonderful message on making your, your choices and your decisions determines your destination. And um, he was preaching, and I was sitting there, I was getting blessed. And then he came right over to the side here, and he looked at me, and he says, That's the truth, Brother Tim. And the anointing, the fire of God, fell upon me right there. He didn't know that. He, I asked him after service, he didn't even remember what he said. So God has truth. God has something for us today. I know that. And here in the scriptures, we see what is the truth. And so many people, like Pontius Pilate, they're asking today, what is the truth? And the sad thing about it, if you look back into the world, and you see in the world, amen, they don't know what truth is. They got, because they haven't been given truth. But that's not the sad thing about it. Right? Like Brother Graham says, on that day that you're going to, you know, it's not the drunkard that's going to be disappointed. It's not the gambler that's going to be disappointed. It's the one that was written into the church. And being under this message, and being under which I believe is the word of God for the hour. I believe he's a genuine, true prophet of God, and the word comes from the prophet. I don't just say that, and I haven't been convinced of that. But the Holy Ghost has revealed that to me. Amen. Amen? Amen? That's how I believe it. That's how I believe truth is when God reveals truth to me. Amen? Amen? And people sitting under this ministry wandering to and fro, back and forth, and not knowing what truth is. It's not just good enough to know the doctrines. It's not good enough to know the mysteries. It's not good enough even to know that God sent a prophet. But what is truth to you? What is truth in your life? Amen. This has come to waken us up, to make us realize who we are. Amen. When we recognize who he is, we recognize who we are. God doesn't want a bunch of robots. Amen? Amen. Brother Graham said, Brother Graham said, Brother Graham doesn't want a bunch of robots and, uh, repeating him and, and, and trying to uh, in, interpret or... or or um, uh, duplicate what he did. <clears throat> but he wanted sons and daughters of God to raise up, to recognize who they are. Amen. That's what the truth is. That sons and daughters will come to maturity. Amen? That God will have a bride in this last day. That will be walking, talking, Lighted herself up with the word. Now how can she do that? Not by her own doing. Not by the law. Mm -hmm. no. Not by legalism. Mm -hmm. Not by your works. Mm -hmm. By yielding and obeying the spirit of God. Amen. But it takes truth. It takes revelation. 
uh, into an individual life to come so that you can do that. John 16, 13. I'll bet when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. You see? When the spirit of truth comes into your life. Now break this down personally to you. That's why it's very important. Amen? People are not taken seriously enough, you know, in seeking for the Holy Ghost. Right. The Holy Ghost is not just an experience. It's not just a baptism. Pentecost are getting those. But the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth Amen. that comes into our lives. Amen. That's what we need to seek for. Truth. Hallelujah. We have a walk. We have a journey that we're on. We have situations in our lives, don't we? We have things that we see about ourselves, weaknesses about ourselves. Amen? We have battles that are going on. We need, and we have to overcome certain things in our lives as God reveals it to us. We need truth as individuals. Amen. And John 8, 32, you pray for me to find the, 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 the channel of the Lord. I'm trusting in him. John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Amen. 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 No other way. When the spirit of truth comes into our lives, it will reveal all things to us that we need to know. And when that truth comes, and only when that truth comes, it sets us free. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus said in John 14, 6, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. If he had known me, yet should I have known my Father, if you know me. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. The Lord Jesus said, I am the light of the world. John 8, 12. He said, I am the truth. Jesus tells the Lord's Tells us in the Lord's word also of all truth. According to the Bible, the Lord is the light and truth and the word. And the word, which is also the truth, gives light in the, in the word. There is light. Therefore, the word and the light and the truth are one. Amen. John 14, 1. 1, 14 speaks of the word becoming flesh, tabernacle amongst us, full of grace and truth, speaks of the law that was given through Moses, but grace and truth through Jesus Christ. When we believe that the Lord Jesus, we receive grace and truth. In the first epistle of John, it says, God is love and God is light. When God comes to us, we receive grace. But when we go to Him, He is love. Grace is the realization and the expression of love. Love is the source and grace of expression. Likewise, truth is the realization and expression of light. Light is the source and truth is the expression. When light is concealed from us, is merely light, but when it shines upon us, it becomes truth. Whenever light shines, we receive truth. 
Light shines in darkness. First and second Timothy, the two books dealing with the duration of truth is mentioned often because in this period of darkness, there is a need for the light to shine and express. Truth is the shining light. Wherever there is light, there is God. For Amen. God is light. Amen. Romans 8, Paul encourages us to walk according to the Spirit. But John, in the second and third epistle, also says in the time of darkness, walk in the truth. Although in this other writings, John emphasizes life in these two epistles, he speaks much about truth. And if you go back in the book of John, you'll see he speaks a lot about the truth. I have no greater joy than these things that I hear my children are walking in the truth. Whenever we are in times of darkness, we need that light to shine. So we may walk in the proper way. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Pontius Pilate asks the question, what is truth? Many people today are asking, what is truth? Inside the Bible, there are many stories. And God reveals many things to us about this world, the lust and the hate and the crime. But the Bible tells the truth about the good, the bad, and the ugly. The Bible tells the truth about Satan and his deception. Amen. Jesus wasn't afraid to call Satan a liar and the father of lies. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So many people are afraid to tell the truth. That's right. About what's taking place out there. Hallelujah. So many people are behind the pulpit right. and not telling the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. About the lies, about Satan, about sin. Yep. But it's the truth. Jesus wasn't afraid. He says when the devil speaks, he speaks out of his own resources. He's a liar and the father of it. The first time that a man had to make a choice between God's truth and the devil's lie, he chose the devil's lie. Amen? So many times we get caught between the crossfire. There's always the two voices speaking to you in your life. One voice is the voice of God, which is truth, will lead you down a certain path. The other voice is the voice of lies. Amen? Amen? The voice of God will always lead you to overcome, to prosper, Amen. to grow, Hallelujah. to go forward in your walk with Christ. The other voice that you listen to the voice of lies will always cause you battles and battle scars. When Adam and Eve rejected God's truth and accepted the devil's lies, at that moment all the trouble in the whole world began. Our sinful nature often sides with the devil's lie instead of God's truth. That's the battle that is going on. You gotta realize what is truth. And the truth is that the body that you're living in is a pest house. Yeah. The carnal mind that battles against the spiritual mind is at enmity with God. Okay. Yeah. So every day of your life that you wake up, every choice that you make, every every trial, every circumstance you come and face with in your life, you're faced with these two. The flesh and the spirit. Amen. You're making choices all the time. As Brother Philip said on, on Wednesday. That will determine your destination. Yes. That will determine your walk. Determine what you will become. Yes, Lord. God is trying to bring his children. Bring them to a place to make the right 
choices in their life to choose the truth. But you must know the truth. You must know that your greatest enemy is not your brother and sister. Your greatest enemy is yourself. That's Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. It's yourself. We're so worried about keeping everybody in line in this message. We're so worried about this person saying this and that person saying that. Or judging this person or criticizing that person or doing this and doing that. And not looking to ourselves. Right. Not getting down with God. Amen. Amen. And meeting with the pillar of fire. That's so I tell you, when you meet with the pillar of fire, you become nothing. Amen. Amen. And you realize, amen? You realize when you're nothing, you got no right to look at anybody else. That's right. Sin is a disease that affects the entire human race. The disease of sin is in the heart of the troubles of the world. To those involved in this dying world, Satan will come with his evil, deceiving power, for they have refused the truth, which could have saved them and set them free. We don't want to refuse the truth. Amen? Amen? We have been given a message with a lot of truth in it about who we are, where we're going, about God's plan in our lives and what He wants to do. Amen? And we want to receive that. We want to surrender our lives to that. I mean, we can all say amen to that, but to actually do it. Amen? It has, you have to pay a price. Mm -hmm. Amen? In mm -hmm. the day and age that we're living in, amen, it's so hard to pay that price. That's right. right. <laughs> with God. Yeah. It's not paying the price with your husband, with your wife, your children. It's paying the price with God. On your knees with God. That's right. Before God. Yes, Lord. Dying out. Daily dying out. Amen? Truth. Truth. The serpent seed. Hmm. You know, I just, we're believers. We, we know this, but. Now the devil come down and got into the serpent. And he found Eve in the garden of Eden naked. You see the lust of the demon, the devil? Demons of lust. And he talked about the fruit in the midst. Means the middle. And so forth. You understand. It's a mixed congregation this morning he's saying. It's good to the eyes. What did he do? He began making love to Eve. And he lived with her as a husband. And she saw it was pleasant. So she went and told her husband. But she was already pregnant by Satan. And she brought forth her first son. Whose name is Cain. The son of Satan. That's true. That's why we're in the condition that we're in. Amen. But the world don't receive this truth. Amen. This is Jesus. Amen. They have another Jesus. Even the churches out there have another Jesus. Amen. But this is the Jesus I serve. That's Amen. right. Amen. The Lord of God. Amen. 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 Now you say that's wrong. All right. We'll just find out whether it's wrong or not. I will put enmity between thy seed and the serpent seed. What? The serpent seed? She had a seed? And he had a seed? And he shall bruise thy head, and you shall bruise his heel. And the bruise there means to make an atonement. 
Now there is a seed of a serpent. Now this serpent, when he stood there, this great big giant of a fellow stood up. He was guilty of committing adultery with Adam's wife. Their sin lies today. You say, Brother Tim, I know that. Adam, he said, I was naked. And he said, who told you you were naked? Well, the woman you gave me done it. She was the one that persuaded me. And she said, the serpent gave me an apple. All right, you preachers, get next to yourself. <coughs> she said, the serpent beguiled me. Do you know what beguiled means? He defiled me. As she was, the devil never gave her an apple. The serpent beguiled me. And then the curse came. You see, this is still a reflection in our everyday life. Every, you say, what, 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 how's this? I know this story and I believe it, but how is the reflection? <laughs> Every time you listen to the spirit of lies, Every time you listen to the devil, it produced this. It, it's just it's that simple, you know. Eve, listen. One word. One word. It caused all this trouble. It caused this trouble that we're battling right now. One word. Break it down into our lives. You shall know the truth, not a lie, but the truth, and the truth will set you free. We want to be free, don't we? We want to have the joy and the happiness and the prosperity of the Lord. We want the Lord to just do great things in our lives. But we need to listen to the right voice. That's right. We need to make the right choices in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you listened to the serpent instead of your husband, you took life from the world. And you'll multiply in sorrow and in conception. And so forth. And because you listened to your wife, the husbands, wives, listen to your husbands. But husbands... Don't listen to your wives. Listen to God when it comes to revelation. When it comes to your position. I can take advice from my wife. And she helps me in many ways that I don't have the ability to do certain things. But when it comes to revelation, when it comes to the Holy Ghost, why God chose it that way is because of what happened here. That's why. But does the world want to receive this? No, it's a woman's world. Women are gods out there. They're leaders out there. They don't want to come subject to this. Amen? Amen. Because you listen to your wife instead of me, I take you from the dust of the highest species back to the dust you go. And then to the serpent, I'll take off your legs upon your belly all the days of your life and thus shall you eat as your meat and you shall be hated. There you are. There is the mystery. Amen. In Noah's day, Genesis 6, 5, and God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination and thought of his heart was only evil continually on the earth was so corrupt before God. The earth was filled with violence. And he looked upon it. And it was. All flesh was corrupt. In their ways. Upon the earth. In Jude 1.7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah. The cities. Themselves were given over to fornication. 
and going after strange flesh and set for an example of sufferance, of vengeance, of eternal fire. As we can see in the world today, as in the days of Noah, the wickedness with the thoughts of man continually evil. It's a neurotic age out there. The earth was corrupt and filled with violence. We can see that. Just read your newspaper. Love has waxed cold. In Lot's day, sexual morality and homosexuality has taken control of the people of Sodom. Jesus tells us in these things would combine and all happen in the last days as it was in Noah and in the days of Lot. They would combine and we see it here today. Can we see it? Yes. Do we understand that it's taking place? Yes. That is truth. Amen? But there's, there's prophecy connected to that truth. To the bride of Jesus Christ. There is something when you see that taking place and happening, there's something taking place in the bride of Jesus Christ that we need to recognize and realize. You know, that, that was when man and was given in marriage and, 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 and taken in marriage and man with man and woman with woman. You know, that was the last sin. That was the last when the cup was full in that day that God rained down fire upon them when same-sex marriage came in. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that? Go back and look in history. Go back and read about it. That was the last straw for God. And here we are today. Right there. Same-sex marriages. Yeah. It's the truth. Yeah. But it's, it's, it, it's, it's so... Nobody wants to talk about it. These evils of homosexuality, sexual morality, these evils have been turned to entertainment. This world now entertained by the very things that God destroyed. Amen. Think about it. Amen. And sometimes you watch your TV, you watch movies and programs that you're inter being entertained by this. By the very thing God rained fire and destroyed? Amen. The last drop? Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters, it shouldn't be so. This is the last days. I'm not talking about you living by law and legalism or anything like that. I'm talking about if you're living by the Spirit of God and you have the love of God inside of you, you will not partake of that stuff. You will not desire and curse for those things. Amen. That's right. Amen. Jesus said himself, if you love the world or the things of the world, the love of the Father is not even in you. Amen. You wrestle with that. Because that is truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Now entertained by the very things that God destroyed. The old world of Sodom or in the days of Lot. The same thing has happened in the world today. The people are dull of hearing the truth. My, what a sad thing when the people in this message can come to a place where their ears are dull of hearing the truth. Truth to people are is interpreted in many different ways. You know, people think their truth, whatever is right for you, whatever is good for you, whatever you feel right, whatever works for you, that's the saying out there. Do it. If it works for you, do it. But that's not the voice of truth. That's the voice of life. Amen? Amen. It's not whatever works for you. It's not whatever makes you feel right or feel good. Sometimes the truth makes you feel bad. Amen? Amen. 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 It does. It makes you feel bad. It brings you to a place of sad. It makes you feel sad and repentant. Knowing what you've done. Knowing where, where you've been. What you have to do. The truth hurts. Sometimes it hurts real bad. Amen? You know when God's speaking truth to you. 
You know when the Word of God is speaking to you. Amen. It's not what I have to say. It's what the Spirit of God is saying to you. Right. He can be convicting you and speaking to you about a certain thing in your life that I'm, I'm not even close to it. Because that's what we believe in, the supernatural. We believe God is here revealing. No man needs to teach you. I can't teach you. Amen. How can I teach you about yourself when I need the Holy Ghost to teach me about me? The Spirit of God, the Spirit of Truth will teach you. Amen. Amen. But we need to listen to Him. We need, we need not to listen to ourselves. We not, need not to listen to other people or other people's opinions or interpretations. But we need to listen to Him. That's right. The Spirit of God who speaks into our hearts. And we can get to a place of being yielded and surrendered to His voice. These are all connected to prophecy in the end time. That we're getting to. And that day, you just take a look around on the TV. You'll see everything. Violence, corruption. God's spirit is still striving with man to convict man of sin and to turn to Christ and obey him. Wow. The long suffering of God in the days of Noah. But it also says he will not strive with men always. There will come a time where the door will close. In the days of Noah, the ark, there came a time when the door closed. Amen. 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 I want to be in now. Amen. I know I'm in now. Amen. I'm just saying that. I know I'm in now, but what about you? Do you know that you're in? Or are you convinced because you believe the message? Are you convinced that you're religious? Are you convinced because you know what Brother Brandon said? You can quote everything that he said? That's why you're convinced? Or do you know that you know that the Spirit of God, just like in Jesus, in perfect faith he talked about, he knew who he was. He knew his position. That's what gave him perfect faith. He knew that he was called. He knew he was the anointed one. And that's where the bride has to come to. 